Well, hello again, beautiful people on the internet. Christian Mo back to talk a bit more about Project Stingray. So we've looked at what's gonna happen, how it's happening, how the parts came in to make it happen, but now I wanna take an actual look at the real parts that are going inside this machine. I'm gonna tell you guys why I picked them. And then the next video is gonna be putting this all together. And we're gonna start doing some benchmark and performance. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the main heart of this entire machine, which of course is the motherboard. So the motherboard that we are using is a Gigabyte G1 gaming motherboard. Here it is. Now, so I chose this board for a couple of very specific reasons, most of which actually revolve around the kind of features it has, not just the color. That said, the fact that it features this white, black, and red color scheme is a big part of it. But so here on the front, we have four slots. These are PCIe X16 slots. That's for video cards. So I've got lots of slots to put lots of stuff in here. I've got some smaller PCIe 1 slots so I can get networking cards, extra sound cards, stuff like that. Now, of course, I don't need a sound card because this actually comes with a built-in Soundcore 3D sound chip. It's basically one of the best chips you can get on the market. And this has a lot of nice features. So it says up here, amp up audio. And this actually has a tracer through the motherboard that you can see. And that eliminates the sound card from the rest of the motherboard so you don't get any kind of electronic interference from the rest of the components interfering with your audio. Very, very nice feature. Also, another thing I like is that these PCIe 16 slots are reinforced with some metal, so they're a bit stronger. Video cards are heavy, they pull on the motherboard a bit, so that's just making them a little bit stronger. It also has crap tons of connectivity options. So it is on the back for connectivity, we have 10 USB ports and an 11th USB port that is the new Type-C connector. I've also got Wi-Fi out, HDMI out, and full audio connectivity along with an optical out and a pair of ethernet jacks that you can use together in tandem. It will also hold 10 hard drives. So lots and lots of options for storage. And again, you just can't get away from this incredible design. This white with the red matches our theme perfectly. Plus there's actually some LED lighting that happens around the motherboard. So you get some nice little flashes of light and color like up here in the amp up audio spot. So that's the motherboard. That's the key heart of this entire machine. Let's go ahead and move into the rest of it. Now providing the power for the whole system that's gonna slide into that motherboard is this. This is Intel's latest and greatest Skylake processor. This is a Core i7-6700. It runs at four gigahertz. It's a quad core, but it has eight threads. So depending on the application, the computer will be seen as an eight core CPU. This is basically the best that you can get that'll fit in our motherboard. It's gonna give us all the power we need to run any single game I can throw at. So super excited about this, but it looks kind of boring. It's just a chip there, so I don't really have a lot of fancy sexy B-roll to show you about that. But at least the box looks nice. All right, for gaming performance, we're gonna be using a pair of Gigabyte Gaming G1 980 Ti's. So these are cards from Nvidia, and they are basically some of the fastest that exist in the world today. But 4K gaming is hard and VR gaming is hard, so one won't cut it, so we're going with two. That dramatically increases our performance in most games, plus it looks really cool sitting in the case. Now the reason I went with the Gigabyte ones is not just because they match our motherboard, but across the spectrum of all the 980 Ti's that exist, the Gigabyte Gaming G1 has consistently been one of the best rated, best reviewed, best overclocking, and best performing. So if you're gonna go with the best, you might as well get the best of the best. And pretty much everyone agrees that the Gigabyte G1 Gaming is one of the best 980 Ti's that exist. The fact that it matches the motherboard is just kind of an extra bonus. Now for a final piece of new hardware, we're gonna talk about our RAM. And here it is, we're using a 32 gigabyte kit from G-Skill. This is called the Trident Z. I went with this kit specifically because I already used the older Trident X and Mo Built Mark II back there and they have been phenomenal. They overclock great, they're insanely fast, and I have never had a single issue out of them. Plus, they look really incredible. So they've got this nice metal heatsink on them that is gunmetal gray on one side, black on the other, and red across the top. So when that's slotted in the motherboard there, it's gonna look great, it's gonna match the build with that nice red accent. This, like I said, is a 32 gigabyte kit, so we have four sticks of this, each one at eight gigabytes and they run at 3200 speeds, so that is 3.2 gigahertz. Very, very, very fast memory. 
these are going to give that nice little boost of extra power that you wouldn't get with a cheaper kit. And like I said, they match your build just great. Also, as a bonus, if you want to build a machine like this, they are now selling these in different colors. So you can get different colored top bands and slightly different colored metal heat sinks. Very, very cool. Now, of course, that's not all that's going into the PC. Obviously, we have the case, which you have seen. Here it is, you know, we've got our nice little picture of the case. So we know what that is, it's part of the NZXT Noctis. We're gonna save that for a later video because I'm doing all the visual customizations for that, so that's gonna be a nice little reveal later on. Now, along with the parts that we've seen here, I'm gonna be pilfering parts from my old computer back there. So uh, for cooling, we're gonna be using the Thermal Take Water 2.0 Extreme Cooler that I have in that machine right now, so I'm gonna be pulling that out and swapping it over. We're also gonna be using my power supply out of that, which is a Thermal Take uh, Tough Power 850, so an 850 watt power supply should give us all the juice we need to run everything in this machine, including both video cards. Uh, for storage, we're gonna be using my Samsung SSD from Mobile Mark II back there, plus all of my standard storage drives. I've got a nice big array of Seagate uh, standard storage drives that are in there that provide me with just the space I need to store all the video and photo footage that I normally get. All right, guys, there you have it. That is the full parts list for what is going inside of Project Stingray. Now, make sure you stick around for the next video because the next one we're going to be doing a full build log of this machine from start to finish. So we're going to show you where all the parts go, why they go there, how we put them in there, why we put them in there in the order that we did, the whole nine yards. And the goal of that is so that if you want to, you can build your own crazy high-end simulation rig so you can play all your favorite racing games at your own house and you don't have to pay anyone else to put this machine together for you. The idea is hopefully when it all gets done, you will have the knowledge and the skills to put it together. And if you ever run into some hiccups, you have this as a reference to go back and figure out what you might have missed or what you need to do next. So anyways, again, I'm Christian Mo. This has been a video for Project Stingray. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.